a refugee camp. That's where my life started. All my memories in Africa are from the refugee camp in Kenya. Did I live in a horrible place? No. Did I live in a difficult place? Yes. The camp provided food, shelter, and clothes, but it didn't offer a place of hope and dreams. We'd wake up every day before sunrise and get in line behind a big truck to pick up food. We'd often wait four to five hours because if you weren't in front of the line, you wouldn't get food that day. It didn't stop there. I'd get back home to do chores and cook, which meant that school was not an option. I didn't spend a single day in school while I lived in that camp. That's why my parents wanted to leave the camp and move to a country that allowed them to build a better future, a future where they could get a job, a future where their children could go to school. They applied to immigrate to Canada, but they weren't successful. So they tried America and were accepted. A year later, we moved to the U.S. I was just eight years old. Three months later, winter arrived and it began to snow. My parents did not like the snow, so they decided to move to San Diego, California. We not only had family there, but they promised us there was no snow. With the help of the Somali community and my family, my siblings and I were enrolled in a K-8 school, Ifton Charter School, which is about 90% Somali. Although I had grown up in refugee camp in Kenya. My family is from Somalia. I, I never felt alone because I was surrounded by my people and made friends, which are still with me till today. I would have to say I have one of the best memories from the school. My friends and I would talk about our future when we're 30 years old with kids and how nothing could separate us. We did everything together. We even decided to go to the same high school. But that's when things started to change. Lost, frustrated. Lonely, empty. That's what I felt. Although I knew I had my friends with me no matter what, I felt lost because I was different. Instead of being in a school with people from my culture, I was now in a school with people from many cultures. I couldn't explain that to my friends. I didn't think they would understand. I was often invited to birthday parties or to hang out on the weekends, but I couldn't go because in my culture, it's wrong for a girl my age to go out a lot. But this wasn't just about me. This was about the other immigrants who didn't feel like they belonged. We'd see people on TV who who felt that we'd see people on TV who angry about immigration and felt it was changing the country in a negative way, which made us wonder if we we're going to be sent back to our home country. I was talking to a Latina girl, and she told me that being optimistic about school was a challenge to her. Her mother had been the only one. Taking care of her and her siblings because our father had been deported. This took a big toll on her life, and her grades were getting worse. She even used the word failure to describe herself. Yet no one was able to see this because she was taught to appear low. She was taught to not appear low income when an immigrant and try to fit in. We can say that kids are resilient and can adapt to new language and culture, but they still need that support from family, friends. And community. It was easier for this girl to tell lies about her living conditions just so she could fit in. Attending school is also difficult for an immigrant, as the experience is different depending on where the child grew up. For instance, a child that received a formal education in a well-developed country could have a completely different outlook compared to a child that received little to no education due to fleeing war and was forced to leave their country. Most children. Who immigrate to a new country to get a better education might not have been exposed to the learning environment and would have a hard time adjusting to their surroundings. Whereas a student who did grow up in a well-developed country, where you started in preschool and was already exposed to formal school setting, but we had counselors who'd pull the newcomers, as they would call them, and put them in a separate room with three other four students. This personalized teaching was a way for them to get comfortable in a small group. With the same style of learning, they were able to go back to their classmates after getting used to the process. Another issue is that when immigrants are taught English, it is only spoken at school, because at home 
their parents speak their native language. My parents relied on my education to help them out with formal school papers. But English being my second language, it was still difficult for me. But I had friends who would help me, even if they didn't know they were. Every time I pronounced something wrong, or my grammar was wrong, they would point it out. I took this as an advantage to practice more my English and reduce the amount of mistakes I was making. Being 15 was the hardest age of my life. Why? Because I needed experience. I needed a job. I needed something to get me outside of the house. And I wanted to do something productive. But everywhere I went, there was one phrase that stopped me. You don't have experience. I'm sorry. It was easy, but I eventually found great opportunities. One of the opportunities was through CTC, a career readiness program that is run by the San Diego Workforce Partnership, where I learned, where I learned the process of getting a job. I attended workshops to get, to get exposed to the professional environment and participated in icebreakers to get out of my com comfort zone and learn how to be successful before actually being interviewed. I, learned from, I went from knowing nothing about interviews and resumes to getting hired at Banana Republic, which is where I work now. I had to learn how to communicate with older people. And you know how hard that is. <laughs> to me, a pair of pants is a pair of pants. But the customers would ask for slow pants and size petite or the Ryan slim straight fit. Who knew that pants had names? <laughs> this experience also allowed me to be a role model for my younger siblings. I want them to know that it's possible to achieve their goals as long as they're willing to make the effort. I, want, I also want them to know that there are people out there to help them succeed. If you're an immigrant facing challenges such as adapting to a new culture, learning a new language, or finding a job, don't let that discourage you from being who you are or fulfilling your dreams. Turn challenges into opportunities. At the end of the day, you are not judged for what's happened to you, but what you decide to become. And remember, there are lots of people out there to help you succeed. From your teachers are with you every day to your counselors are finding new ways to overcome your problems. Don't limit yourself to the amount of advice and help you can receive. There are organizations out there to help who are looking for people like you because it's okay to shine and achieve what you want. And if you're born in America, I would like to offer the words of Martin Luther King. We may all have come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. We should put our differences aside and work together to help those who have come here escaping poverty and violence and simply want to build a better future. Be that one person who has, a, who has made a change in an immigrant's life, which has the power to change all immigrants and which will benefit society as a whole. Thank you.